Hello. Hello. Welcome everybody to uh, session three of Splashing Around with Installatron Apps. Um, today we're going to be talking about, well, first of all, thanks for joining me, Meredith. Yeah, of course. This has been really fun to um, watch through and even kick off with the Mecca and Scaler. So I'm really, really excited to see what we've got in store with, with this session for sure. Yeah, I, I'm been, I was really, I'm really been happy to see the reaction so far too of folks kind of chatting about like, Hey, we're using Omeka in this way, or this is a problem we run into. I expect maybe with this one, we won't have as many people with experience with it. It's kind of a weird application. Um, well, it's not weird, but I think it's less used than Omeka, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, and even Scalar, I would say. Um, <clears throat> but uh yeah, it's been really cool. And to me, kind of um, this this application, maybe most of all of the ones we're going to talk about through this session, kind of to me demonstrates sort of like that utility of owning your own domain, right? Getting way back to like what we're about here, right? Which is sort of yeah, like, absolutely. it's not just a blog. You can do all kinds of things with it. And there are all kinds of reasons you may want a whole space to play with, right? Um so the application we're going to talk about is called URLs or URLs. It's it's spelled Y O U R L S. I think they're going for URLs. <laughs> um, yeah. But I will say when I read it in my head, I'm always saying URLs in my head for some reason. So I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, and what it is is a self-hostable link shortener. So it's basically Bitly, but you can have it on your own domain. Um, and in fact, because it's, you know, uh, an application that works in cPanel, you can kind of do all kinds of funky things with it too. Um, I have been, um, using URLs for kind of a long time, about as long as I've had like a reclaim hosting account, actually, it's like well before I worked here, um, just for the idea of, Hey, I want to make a shortened link but I want to have it at my own domain name because domain names are cool. <laughs> and, yeah. and I think the second big one is it lets me change things after the fact. So one of the things, if you use link shorteners a lot, like bit.ly, um, uh, if not every service lets you change a link after you've already created it. So I mm -hmm. think bit.ly does, if you have an account and there's like certain circumstances to it, but, um, as an example, but m this happens all the time. I'll say this happened to me all the time, like, especially when I was a teacher, <laughs> um, because I would like make a short link for something that I wanted my students to go visit or, or if I'm helping faculty too, like if I'm aiding the teaching process and then it's like, Oh, we have to update that to move someplace else. Now we need to make an entirely different link. Like we can't change that old one. Um, right. using something that you actually control like URLs, um, you can just update the link. Um, the other thing, if you're unfamiliar with link shorteners um, in the audience, um, the other thing that's great about them is also for like QR codes. So if you want to make a QR code, like you're making a poster or something, um, <clears throat> you can make a QR code directly to the link that you're, you know, wanting people to visit, of course. But that has the same problem. If something changes about that link, then you got to print new posters. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anytime I make a QR code for something, I use URLs to, to actually generate a shortened link and the QR code goes to that. That way, in the worst case where, oh man, we, made, we messed up, we have to go to a different URL, maybe it's a new Google Doc or a new Zoom link or something, right? Where you don't have a lot of control over what that link looks like this can save you from having to reprint 300 posters and putting them all up over campus or whatever. So um, I'm a big fan of tools like this and <clears throat> URLs in particular is great because you get to control the whole, you know, usage of it, including what the domain name is. So mm -hmm. um, looking at the website really quick, um, they have a pretty um, basic, they kind of don't like they say, Hey, it's a URL shortener. That's about all they say about, um, what it actually is in terms of the functionality. Um, it, you know, it, it works on Apache, PHP, and MySQL. So works in cPanel or shared hosting or domain of one's own. Um, it's, um, 
there's kind of not a lot else to know about actually using it. So we will spend some time uh, today installing it, talking about some of the things to to know about, but like using it is pretty simple. Um, and uh, they also have a GitHub page if you're if you're curious to look at that. It kind of similarly says almost nothing about using it, but you know, hey, it's an option. Um, so I kind of wanted to jump right into installing it and kind of looking at what this thing actually looks like. So I'm signed into my cPanel here um, for for my main account. Um, and I already do have an install um, that we we can talk about a little bit, but so I have one at this domain I got very recently actually called wis.cx. Um, I got it because it's really short. <laughs> so it's really great for URL shorteners, obviously. Um, and um, that's cool. Um, but you don't have to have a dedicated domain to install it on, of course. Just like anything else in Installatron, you can put it on a subdomain or a subfolder. So before I got this domain, wis.cx, I actually just had it at link.jaden.me, which is my, jaden.me is my main domain. Um, and that was fine. I used that that way for many years. It wasn't particularly short, but um, it was very pronounceable, which is nice. If you're telling someone a domain, it goes link.jaden.me slash whatever I wanted to call it. So um, the other thing you can do, it's kind of cool, is you can put it in a sub uh, subdirectory as well. So um, just, again, just like anything else in Installatron. So this is potentially how I would do it now because I love the idea of maybe putting it under, say, a WordPress site or something. Mm -hmm. So you could have like your main blog, let's say it's jaden.me, put it at slash L, right? Just one letter. <laughs> that doesn't um, that doesn't really increase the URL length that much and allows you to do handle all of these short links and redirects and stuff in this application design specifically for it, which is kind of neat. Um, and it also can... kind of just creates like a good, like see almost seamless experience, like yeah. with the subfolders. Like I like I like that a lot that idea. Yeah, I think that's how I would do it now. And in fact, I actually have um, a redirect set up on my site to go jaden.me slash l goes to my main URL URL URLs <laughs> thing. Um, but I, I picked the option to um, do a wildcard redirect. So basically, I can tell it. Let, I'm digging in the weeds. We sh we sh I'll, I'll save this for actually using it in a second, but I can choose either place to use it, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So to install this thing, um, you're going to go to the tool section here, or applications, I mean, and then all applications. And um, I always just search for it, to be perfectly honest. It's somewhere in this list, um, but we're just going to search for it. And there we go, URLs. U U URLs. <laughs> um, and then we'll install. And um, so you can pick a domain here. I'm, I've got like a demo subdomain I like to use for things that are temporary. So I'm going to install it there. But keep in mind that maybe you want to put it on its own subdomain or maybe you want to put it under another application. I'm going to keep the, book, the bookmarks directory. That sounds good to me. I'll keep it at bookmarks. So my install will live at demo.jaden.me slash bookmarks. Um, there's not much to put in here or other application or other things to ask. I will have it um, update to any new version. That's cool. I'm going to make a username and password. So let me do that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, email is good. Title doesn't really matter. No one else is going to see it uh, theoretically, but I'll, I'll, how about we do my public URLs? That's fine. And then this is one that is unique. So it says public access. Allow anyone to access application or require administrator password. What this is controlling is whether other people other than you who has the admin password, can they make links? You probably want this to be no. <laughs> um, because otherwise, anyone can make a shortened URL on your domain. Um, maybe you are OK with that. You. Uh, could also combine it with something like, um, I was going to say with Apache's, um, with the with the directory privacy thing, but mm -hmm. 
but that's putting a password on it. So I don't, I don't know why I personally can't think of a situation where you would want this to be. Yes. Unless you're like, I'm going to take on bit.ly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I think you could do this with like a club on campus or something like that. Or like if you're on, if you're doing a, a class project, um, I think this would be a good idea to allow for just a little bit of time. But I, I think leaving it open for an extended period of time is, is not best practice in that time. Yeah. And you, you will have to, like, if you wanted to change it later, um, you have to go into a config file and change it. You can't change it from install Tron again, unless you uninstall it and reinstall it which at which point all of your urls are gone right so right um so i think almost everyone's going to want this to be no and then you know you could always share the password with people who want to use it um or you could do this yes and have it be temporary but keep in mind like it's open to spammers now <laughs> um so that that could be not great um I'm actually going to install it both ways just to show you all what it looks like. So we're going to do a public one first. That's why I called it my public URLs, <laughs> URLs um, and uh, install. I should have had a counter for how many different ways I'm going to pronounce URLs <laughs> yeah. today. Um, I was joking when we were planning this that URLs sounds like the Yanny and Laurel like debate with the sounds like I'll have to put a, a link to the YouTube channel or the YouTube video in the chat but at one point there was just some audio that like sounded a different way it sounded like Laurel which to me like equates to yours so it was, it was funny yeah but. so it installs really quickly it's tiny um it's only like 10 megabytes of stuff in there um and um that's the URL it's at demo.jaden.me slash bookmarks and here we go so you can see I am I'm not logged in right now, um, but the actual URL becomes this public, hey, maybe you want to make a bookmark page. Um, so this is open to anyone. Um, <clears throat> you can, I mean, making a bookmark itself is very simple, right? So let's say I wanted to link to, I don't know, a particular, um, actually, here's a good example here. Um, I'm going to go to our help, uh, our uh documentation here and I'll just pick a random article and um, you know I've got this long URL here so maybe I want to make this shorter now I know because I work here that I can actually cut off most of this URL but most of the time you don't know <laughs> so I want to shorten that because maybe I need to print you know maybe I need to be referencing this in like a workshop and I want to put it on a slide so people can type it into their phone or something um, and then you can optionally name it. So if you don't, it's going to randomly generate something. Um, I like naming them personally, so I usually will. So what was this even about again? Something with light speed. I'll put light speed in the name. How about bookmark slash light speed? And you can give it an optional title as well. This is mostly usable in the back end. You hit shorten, and there you go. You get a short link. It also gives you like a nice little... Um, like, hey, you know, maybe you want to post this to Twitter or Facebook, I guess. Um, it's going to put the title of the web page in here. And a lot of times you'll get a weird title because um, of the way things work. So it says security check. That's just because um, our Zendesk is like, that seems like not a real person. So it puts a little security check yeah. up there. But most of the time, you're just going to copy this link. So now I can go to demo.jaden.me slash bookmarks slash lightspeed. And there we go. So now that that link works great. Um, there are also these handy bookmark li bookmarklets, which is cool. So you can drag these into your bookmarks bar and use them. I personally don't use these, but um, if I was making a lot, I would. Um, you can do a default one, which will um, just bring you to the the page. Custom. Um, actually, these aren't working right now because I'm on a page. So if I drag these in. Um, that's fine. They're just variations on the similar thing. So basically, mm. um, if I go to maybe uh, um, another support article here. Oh, that's bad. Don't want to go to tickets. You get a little a little view of, of our admin <laughs> interface. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, so... Uh, let's go to here. 
So if I hit default here, it's just going to open up um, the actual um, bookmarklet. Oh, I wonder if these are not working anymore. Um, you can also do a custom URL. So um, what this will do is um, it will automatically fill in. Yeah, it's funny. I think it might be something with my Firefox like security settings, but these bookmark bookmarklets aren't working. Um, but what it oh, should okay. do is pre-fill um, these fields for you, basically. So um, the default one will just pre-fill the URL in, so you can hit shorten. The custom one will pre-fill the URL, and then whatever you type as the custom URL will go in there. And then the other two are simply going to um, the other two are simply going to um, do the same thing, but in a little pop-up window which um, again, isn't gonna work because of my <laughs> security settings, um, but uh, it's basically the same thing. I could see using these, um, but personally, I prefer to just go and log in and make them. I'm not making these multiple times a day or anything like that, um, but it is kind of cool that they come out of the box with some, um, with some bookmarklets that you can use. So that's the public one. Um, I'm actually going to delete this one now and uh, we're going to make it again, but not public because there's kind of a trick with this. So um, if I go in here and actually I don't need to check that. We'll uninstall this. <clears throat> and if you're working with multiple people on this, um, can you create more than one administrator user? Um I have never done that. And as far as I know, um, you can, but there isn't a facility to do it in the actual application. So it's gotcha. kind of weird, but I think you'd have to make it in the database. So my suggestion okay. would be that if you wanted to do multiple people with this, I would honestly just share a password because what you're doing is sharing a password for something that's pretty low risk, right? Like there's no access to email or other applications or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. however, you also could consider making more than one, right? Like you could make several installs. They have to live at their own URLs, of course, but like you could make several if that was a concern. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, URLs is very basic. <laughs> like it, it really only does this one thing. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, there's no facility to make more accounts in the actual interface. And we'll we'll look at the admin interface in a second because I have to log into this one that I'm about to make. So, um, yeah. All right, so I'll do this again. I'll set my username and password up. Um, I'll just leave this title the same. This time I'm going to say no, no public access. Okay, so now with no public access, if I go to the URL, it's gonna look like this, which is not great. <laughs> so what's happened here is the page we were just looking at, the public page where you can make a bookmark, it just simply didn't make that file. <laughs> and it was an index.php file. Because there's no file called index, Apache, the web server, is just gonna be like, cool, um, Here's the files and folders in that folder you asked for. Um, so this is not great. <laughs> um, now, if I go back to the thing here and click on this admin link, that works. Nothing's broken. It's just URLs is very basic. <laughs> so if I go to admin here and log in with my password, uh, username and password, here we go. I've got my login. We haven't seen this before, but this is the interface and it's very similar. It just shows here, here you can make a URL. Here's all of the um, ones you've made before. It comes with some default ones for some reason, um, but that's kind of it. You can, you can track from here the number of clicks um, and uh, what IP um, the this would be the IP that is the server you're going to. I'm not really sure why you'd care about this to be honest, but it is there. Um, and if you go in here um, and I go to tools. That's where you can now look at your bookmarklets that I was mentioning before. There are some other ones that will give you like a ready to go post for Facebook or Twitter, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then there's some information about the API because it does have an API, which is kind of cool. I've never used that, but you know, I, that's interesting that has one. 
There's also plugins. So um, the plugins are kind of like Omeka where you have to go find them and upload them to the file manager to use them. Um, and perfectly honest, I've never used a plugin. <laughs> um, I, I don't have any of them activated. Um, th there, I, maybe I would use this one that allows hyphens. <laughs> um, but you know, this is such a simple thing. Like, what other functionality do you want? Now, you can go to the plugin list, and I was looking at this earlier, and they have a GitHub repository specifically collecting a bunch of plugins, and um, there are some interesting ones. Like there's one that adds two-factor authentication. So that's kind of cool. Um, I could see potentially using that if you're concerned about the security of it. Um, there are some different ones that let you do like CAPTCHA links to prevent spam, which could be great if you have a public URLs um, like we were just talking about. There's ones that let you do things like put an Amazon affiliate link tag in if you're doing Amazon affiliate stuff. There's some things that extend the API, but like, okay, this one's interesting. It lets you bulk import from a CSV file. So maybe you're importing from some other service you used to use. I could see that be inter um, uh, interesting to do. But to be perfectly honest, I think most people aren't needing a lot of this, but I like to point out that, hey, there are plugins. They do exist. Um, so you have a ton more than I thought you they would have. Yeah, like, there's so much you can do with it. Wow. I even love this. Um, change your password from within URLs. That's a plugin. <laughs> Normally, you have to edit the configuration file. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there's um, there's there's a ton of plugins. URLs is somewhat popular, is my understanding. It's been around a long time, and it, if you're gonna self-host something like this, this is the option. There's not a lot of other things that do link shortening. Um, I mean, there could be, but there hasn't, there hasn't been, I think a lot of industry need for someone to be like, oh, I want to write my own version of this. It's like, okay, what do you want it to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a pretty simple thing. Um, there is, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of plugins, but I've never personally needed to play with them. Oh, that's interesting. There's LDAP. So you could do single sign on for your, that's crazy. For your URLs. That would be cool for a school. I could see doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know 100% if an IT department would want to sign up for, like, <laughs> integrating it with that. Like, you know, it's one thing to integrate with WordPress. It's such a popular thing. We at Reclaim have a lot of expertise with it. URLs is obviously more um, niche. So, mm -hmm. but um, this is kind of neat that you can actually use this um, to generate QR codes right in URLs. I actually want to try this one. I don't know that I'll try it on recording here because I've never used it. But this is one thing I um, was noticing just before we started recording. I was like, oh, that would be cool to have it generate the QR code instead of me having to go use. Um, usually I use a Firefox extension to do that, which mm -hmm. is fine. Um, but it would be kind of cool to not even need that. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of plugins. You upload them to the file manager um, very much like Omeka. And that's kind of it. Then you can activate them within the interface here. So, um, okay. So that's what the admin interface looks like. I've logged in. I can I can delete a link here. Um, I can actually look at um, more statistics here, which is kind of interesting. So you can get some. So like if I use this one here, so it's OZH. So that would be mo.jaden.me slash bookmarks slash OZH. Okay, so that's uh, redirected. Um, if I uh, refresh here, you'll see that uh, it actually logged that. So that's kind of cool. You can get that basic um, information, basic kind of analytics stuff. So I can see traffic statistics, um, location, which is kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> sources, it'll have referrer data if you if someone clicked on it from something like Facebook or Twitter. Um, and then uh, share is just another thing that gives you the access to the link. So, so that's that's the basic of using it once you've logged in. So, how do we fix the issue of hey, this is at demo.jane.me slash bookmarks, and I don't want people who decide to visit that URL to get this display. Um, really simple fix, actually. You can just fix this yourself in the file manager. This is what I've done. So, um, if I go back to my cPanel. 
and open up the file manager. And never mind my very, very messy hosting account. <laughs> um, bookmarks. So I went to the folder where URLs, URLs is installed. In my case, it's in demojet.jaden.me slash bookmarks. And I'm just going to make an index file here so that Apache, the web server, has something to display. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to make a new file, call it index.html. If you're a PHP person, you could write an index.php and do that instead if you wanted to. Um, and honestly, if I just if I do nothing, <laughs> I've already kind of fixed it. So if I just make the file, now at least instead of having that directory list, it's just a blank page. Um, so that's, I think, better. Um, but what I like to do is actually redirect this to something else. So that way, if someone's found a short link, to, to me, this is mitigating the curious person who sees like, oh, interesting, demo.jaden.me slash bookmark slash OZH. What's that, the actual base URL, you know? Um, it's to mitigate that curiosity. I like to use a uh, simple HTML uh, meta redirect um, or refresh, I think it technically is. So I, I had this bookmark and I'm just pulling it up now, but um, we can just throw this one line into that file and it will redirect people from that page we just made to wherever we want to go. So if I go back here in my index um, and paste that in, it's going to say, hey, refresh. This is the amount of time, so this means immediately. I don't know why, but you could make the browser wait for three seconds before it goes someplace else. Um, I don't know why you'd do that, but you could. Um, and then you're telling it, and go to this URL. So in my case, maybe I'm just going to have it go to my blog. Like if they try to visit my URL, my URLs uh, <laughs> install directly, just redirect them back to my blog. Um, so if I hit save and then go to this URL again, bam. Now it goes to jaden.me. So and that won't affect in any meaningful way the uh, ability to make bookmarks because I can still go to, to demo.jaden.me slash bookmarks slash admin and of course log in. I'm already logged in, but you know I can still do that. So um, that's kind of cool. And that's kind of how I uh, like to use it because I do want to log in on it. Um, and I don't like that it has that by default, the display of folders and files otherwise. So um, that's kind of my little hack around that problem. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything else? Uh, <laughs> questions about that weird yeah, hack? Yeah, I did actually have a question based on this. Um, do you still have the same bookmark options, like the custom default pop up, like all that sort of stuff? Like, could you bypass having to log in every time on the private by just bookmarking like the the simple or the custom bookmark? You still have to log in. So if you give someone the bookmarklet, um, unfortunately, it's still loading the web page for the admin interface, so they still will have to log in. Mm -hmm. um, there is... Um, I think theoretically a way to do this, like if you wanted to make something that someone could make, someone could someone you trusted could make um, uh, shorten URLs without sharing the password with them. Theoretically, mm -hmm. you could do something with this API here. Um, I am not at it by any means an API expert. But it's important to keep in mind that typically API requests are just URLs that you are requesting. So okay. um, if you look here, it says, hey, usage of a signature token. And it says this is a secret signature token. Um, so what this is is sort of replacing logging in. Um, so they're saying, hey, you can just use it as a parameter. And this is the URL. So it's demo.jaden.me slash bookmark slash URLs API signature and then action equals and then Dot, dot, dot. So something. So my point is, if you wanted to read up on the passwordless API, it's possible you could make your own bookmarklet that did that, basically. It just doesn't come out with it out of the box. And I've never tried it, to be clear. So I don't know that it works. But okay, um, I think that should... My understanding is you wouldn't have to go very far to do that. Basically, it would be... Um, 
a little bit of reading of the documentation here on what these parameters could be. But basically, mm -hmm. you know, they would go to this URL, you know, with the signature at uh, action equals, let's say it's like shorten, <laughs> you know, and then and URL equals HTTPS Jaden.me. It would be something like this, I guess is my point. So all you'd have okay. to do is make a bookmarklet that goes there, basically. Um, gotcha. You could even make like the cool thing that it has an API, something I haven't played with URLs much is you could even, because it has a pretty straightforward you, uh, API, you could even do like interesting automation things with it. Like um, have it integrate with gravity forms or Zap Zapier in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you would do, <laughs> but you could imagine like maybe, you know, you've got a, gravity form and you upload a picture to it and then it returns to you via email or something zapier sends you a shortened link to that image file or something like that the, the, it's really cool to me to see that they have api support um, built right in which is really interesting mm -hmm. i've never used it it's kind of outside of what i need it for but it is there um so i think it's kind of interesting to, to keep that in mind um, yeah, I mean, th that's kind of, you know, there's not a lot to say about this thing. I'll make a couple other links, I guess, just to, to kind of mention it. Um, but it is such a simple thing, but I think potentially really powerful in getting folks to not have to rely on a service they don't have control over. Like I've seen people pay for Bitly Pro just so that they could have a certain amount of like private links or changeable links. And it's like, yeah, or, you know, you can do that. Um, but yeah. um, doing this right on a domain you already own and are already using makes so much sense to me. Um, so um, I think it's kind of a cool option. So uh, let me make a, here, let's, let's set one here. This one will go right to setting up two-factor authentication right in the logging in step. So I'll grab that URL. We'll make another one here. Um, And we'll call this 2FA. And yeah, I, I feel like the possibilities here are kind of endless. Like I'll say, and um, I've worked in places where we had a web developer like make our own custom URL shortener thing. <laughs> and then that was used internally and externally for a long time. And nowadays that would be just silly. Like, I don't know why you do that when you can use something like this. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Um, anything else? It's going to be, I, I think, a short one. <laughs> yeah, super short. I think this is really cool. I was completely like, I hadn't really ever heard of this until now. And so I'm like super excited to like see what it is. And I'm honestly going to go like look at the list of plugins and see if I can try to figure out some of them. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. definitely set up the QR code one and I'll put notes in the Discord about what I find out. I. I just don't want to try it, right? I don't want to waste everyone's time right now and find out that it doesn't work or something like that because right. I haven't used it before. But that to me seems like a cool one. Um, and yeah, I I I love this as like a little break kind of between we're going to talk about next week, we're going to talk about Matomo, which is an analytics suite and is also mm -hmm. not really the same thing as Scalar and Omeka, right? Scalar and Omeka are content management systems like WordPress. I, I guess Yorls has content and it manages the content, <laughs> but but not really, yeah. right? Um, and Matomo is different too in that it's not a you know web publishing kind of thing or at all or um, blogging software or anything like that. Um, but this one is so delightfully simple. It's a little cupcake of an application. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. That's a good analogy, cupcake. <laughs> and now I'm going to be thinking that, about that at lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can tell I'm hungry. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, well, thanks for joining me, uh, Meredith. And uh, thanks yeah. for everyone who watched this uh, little, little demo of the possibilities of you're running your own link shortener on uh, your domain. So. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Well, we'll see you all next week. Bye. See you.